Hello, uh, my name is Nikola Stilkovic. Uh, I'm the CEO of company Essential Dots, uh, software development company uh, based here in Belgrade. Uh, the, this talk will be about data in the continuous delivery process. Uh, what's the presentation about? Uh, it's about helping others in adapting proper continuous delivery in their companies. Uh, this will be a strictly technical talk. Uh, I'll give a brief overview of the data related patterns uh, especially in relation to cloud-based continuous delivery and uh, e-commerce solutions requiring PCI DSS compliance. So the PCI DSS compliance is, is a payment card and uh, industry uh, data security standard. Uh, it's a proprietary information security standard for organizations that uh, handle uh, branded credit cards from the major uh, card schemes. Uh, this presentation, this talk, assumes that you already are sold on the value of continuous delivery, uh, but you see it as a too complex to, to integrate in your company. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a full-stack developer and a system architect. Uh, nowadays, it's popular to say that you're a dropout from university. I drop out from PhD studies, so I guess that doesn't count as being successful. Uh, I have a decade of uh, experience in enterprise content management and e-commerce, and I built uh, cloud-based PCI DSS compliance service providers, uh, and I'm a passionate no-ops and functional programming advocate, and a proud father of two sons. So, uh, what's data? Uh, uh, usually people think uh, of data uh, in the sense of their applications as database content. Uh, besides database content, files can be uh, files such as images, documents, PDF files, words, etc., can be also uh, regarded as a, as, a, as a data. There's also configuration data, which is very important in the continuous delivery process for the configuration management. And of course, your application bytecode or just application code is also some kind of data. So how is this uh, data managed? Well, for the uh, application bytecode uh, and application code, you are using probably Git or any other uh, version controlling system, and you're using probably Artifactory or Nexus or some other uh, artifact repository. For configuration data, you're probably bound by the configuration management system you chose. Uh, either it's a chef server, it's Git, uh, uh, maybe it's a third party service like Amazon Opsworks. Uh, but how are database content and files managed? That's the topic of uh, this presentation. And I'll give uh, nine uh, patterns for, for managing uh, content in the continuous delivery process. So pattern number one, use sandbox with lightweight content. So the idea is to pack lightweight excerpt of content, both DB and files, as artifacts with support for versioning. Uh, these uh, artifacts should be applied automatically on deployment. And uh, the, the, the most scariest thing for, for most of the developers, at least uh, from the discussions I had with the, with the Belgrade-based companies, is that they have to, uh, you have to kickstart your custom tool. There's no uh, public and uh, popular tool for, for, for this kind of operation. And uh, for, from, from, from my experience, Jenkins will do just fine as an as a artifact repository in this case. And this is very important data pattern. So this tool should be able to go through the, through the SSH tunnels and fetch database via SQL queries or whatever database you're using and uh, fetch uh, files from whatever uh, file system you're using. Uh, in some cases, you would probably need to minimize the files. That's also one pattern, uh, use, uh, one idea used here. So for example, if you have a huge amount of big PDF files, maybe it's a good idea just to, to uh, in this process of minification, just uh, replace them with, with blank PDF files or something. Depends on the, on the business case. The next pattern is to use DB migrations. DB migrations are incremental reversible changes to database scheme managed as code. So these DB migrations should be uh, pushed uh, together with your application code, and they should be applied automatically on deployment. Uh, uh, there are various tools for this, uh, unlike for pattern one, uh, like Flyway, DB Deploy, and a whole bunch of others. Uh, why I made the order of patterns in this way? Uh, it's very important that the lightweight excerpt 
the, 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 the lightweight artifact from the pattern one is applied first on the deployment and later on the DB migrations should be applied. Why is that? Because the uh, lightweight uh, database uh, uh, artifact should contain the current migration state of that uh, excerpt. Uh, the third pattern is to decouple deployment. So uh, this is also a bit tricky. Even if you are not doing cloud-based deployment, you should definitely follow this pattern. And that's uh, enabling deployment of database and applications changes independently. In, in cloud-based uh, deployments, it's pretty obvious because not all of the nodes can be uh, deployed at the same time. Pattern number four is, uh, that's my favorite, it's to lower the number of stages in the pipeline. So uh, typically, uh, the companies I spoke with have uh, some kind of staging environment, pre-production environment, which, is, uh, which should be the exact copy of, of production environment. Uh, I say that that's an anti-pattern, and you should only have three stages, stages. One is integration or latest, depending on the naming convention, where uh, the quick tests are done on git push or garrett uh, patch review. Uh, these quick tests are uh, coding guideline checks, compilation checks, unit tests, uh, everything which will fail fast. Then the test environment uh, is used uh, to uh, run full acceptance tests. Uh, these cannot be run or usually cannot be run uh, per each commit because they uh, can take hours. So they are run a few times a day. So that's why you need a separate testing environment for this, and of course, production environment. So how do you, how do you hide the unpublished or unapproved features? Uh, for example, if you implemented something, it uh, ran through first and second stages, and it's all green, but your client or your end users did not approve that feature. You still should push it to production and hide it via, via feature flags. Uh, this lowers the cost of the whole infrastructure and it allows for most, uh, more accurate performance tests to be, to be run. Uh, the pattern number five is to use test data on production. Uh, so the idea is to separate data in two data sets. Uh, I call it test and live data set and store it both on production DB. Uh, and uh, this uh, hidden test data set is visible either via a specific IP range of, of, of visitors or via maybe a secure or, or, or a hidden cookie or something like that. Uh, pattern number six is a bit uh, more advanced, uh, is to use workspaces. This is a, uh, workspaces are a popular, popular feature in the enterprise content management, but they can be applied to, to all kinds of applications. It's basically a branching for content. But in order to do this, you need support, a lot of support in your application and DB layer. Uh, for example, if you're using Java or Scala or whatever on Java virtual machine, uh, there's a Java content repository database named Oak, or a few other implementations which support this kind of workspaces. So you can actually run full tests and run configuration changes and everything on the separate draft workspace or call it whatever you want on the production without affecting the live website. Uh, pattern number seven, uh, it might not be related strictly to continuous delivery but to the security uh, uh, imposed by the PCI DSS uh, uh, compliance is to encrypt data using hardware security modules. Hardware security modules can be really expensive so uh, you can use uh, hardware security module, modules as a service, for example, Amazon uh, KMS. Uh, and the idea is to define at least two master data keys, one highly confidential data key for live data set and a default key for, for everything else, for test uh, data set. And of course, each user's or, or whatever your, your unit of, of data is, should be, uh, confidential data should be encrypted with the, with the master data key, depending on the, on the uh, confidentiality level and a different uh, public uh, public key. Uh, now the pattern number eight is to enforce manual code review. That's also something uh, I, I, I preach a lot. Is uh, uh, even though you can encrypt highly confidential data using the data key. Uh, for which the regular developers do not have uh, access, you should not allow them to, to, to have 
even that encrypted data on their development machines. Uh, so uh, my personal recommendation is to uh, stop using Git and switch to uh, Git on steroids, Garrett, uh, which allows uh, uh, which allows manual code review. You can enable manual code review per Git repository on Garrett. Uh, and one more uh, recommendation uh, for, for Garrett. I, I sound like I'm biased. I'm, I don't have any relation to Garrett, actually. Uh, that uh, Garrett actually helps you with the continuous integration, which is one of the ingredients of, of continuous delivery. Uh, so uh, some preachers of continuous delivery, like uh, Jez Humble mentioned that uh, in order for you to do a proper continuous integration, you should, everyone should work on, on master branch. Uh, all the mergers should happen uh, at the end of the day, at, uh, at latest. And if your build is broken, it should not be broken for more than 10 minutes because it affects everyone. But with Garrett, you, uh, you push patches uh, to, the, to, the, to the review server. Uh, then the non-interactive user, such as Jenkins, uh, it does all the all the code validation uh, uh, checks as usual, like you would do with Git. But if it fails, it doesn't block everyone because it's a separate patch which is not still merged, and it uh, it can all be done on a, on a, on a, on the same branch, on the same master branch. It's really really uh, really great workflow. And uh, from my experience, people are really scared of Garrett, but whoever switched to Garrett never looked back. And uh, pattern number nine is to decouple content and application build. So uh, one of the patterns for the continuous delivery that, uh, or for the continuous integration is that all developers should be able to run application build on their own development machines. Uh, that, of course, should no, is not advisable for the data artifact build I mentioned in pattern one for the, for the lightweight data excerpt. Uh, because you have security concerns, uh, and we have a whole bunch of patterns I already uh, mentioned uh, for, for um, managing highly confidential data. Uh, so in this case, data artifacts build uh, should be performed, uh, performed only by a dedicated environment, non-interactive non users such as Jenkins, which has security access to, to, uh, to access via, for example, SSH tunnels, to production environment where all the encrypted data is. So that, that, that's, uh, that's the, the, the last pattern. Uh, and uh, I would also, because I was quick enough, uh, I would also mention that continuous delivery, uh, if you, if you, if you uh, uh, followed uh, uh, closely these patterns, is actually not continuous. So uh, these data artifacts are built uh, in a discrete uh, moment of time. So some authors, like Jim Coplin, uh, introduced the, the term responsive delivery, which I agree and I, I respect more. But the, data, the, the title of the presentation remained with the continuous delivery because everybody understands what it means. So that's it. Do you have any questions? No questions. Okay. About the Garrett, uh, do yeah. we have to have uh, always a code review when, it, when we push the changes? So that will maybe slow the process? Uh, no, it's a code, code review is optional. Uh, actually, in one of the previous versions uh, the, of Garrett, uh, the code review uh, configuration thing was disabled by default. So ah, previously, so previously you, because th this is more in line with the, with the continuous integration. So you don't, it depends on your company culture, on your, on your team expertise, whether you want code review on the main application code. For the Git repository containing uh, configuration of the data artifact build, you probably need code review if you have confidential data. If you don't have confidential data, it really doesn't matter. OK, thanks. All right, thank you.